personally, I didn't want the Idaho resident uh, in part of the language uh, because I think it doesn't matter if you're Idaho resident. Some states uh, don't have that requirement, but unfortunately, Idaho did, and that was really uh, part of the negotiation, the pushback by the sh by the chiefs of police because they felt that if if you were an Idaho resident, there would be records, uh, criminal records uh, in the state that they could refer to to see if you were an ex a convicted felon or not, and maybe didn't meet the criteria on those that uh, don't allow you to have it. But um, anyway, and I can tell you too, where the first let the first piece of legislation and the language came out, it did not include the 18 to 20 year olds. They were excluded completely, but they changed the language to allow those that are 18 to 20 to carry concealed in the county and then they require the enhanced. So, if you, uh, some just general information, if you come down to the Sheriff's Office in Bonner County, uh, and I'm just saying that because I can't really speak to the other counties, uh, you will re re be required to fill out, a, if you're just getting a basic, just an application, uh, we're going to collect uh, $37 and, or $39.75, and that goes to the Idaho State Police because they, they're uh, given charge for doing the background check. And then when you get done, there's another $22.70 uh, charge. So, and then, I hate this, that's why I like the witness carry and constitutional carry because you, don't, you just can avoid this if you stay in Idaho and it's not required. Then, we require that you, the, you get your finger tr fingerprints actually done in our county at the jail. I tell you, for the first year, we allowed any fingerprints to be accepted into the sheriff's office, and what happened was uh, those folks that, that, that did it in either some of the police departments or health and welfare, they did that. They did such a poor job that we were just getting rejects all the time. So we know we actually have a glass, a machine that takes it, and we can tell if it's going to be rejected. So that's the, that's the current policy now, and then the renewals, for which the, the permit itself is, is good for five years. Um, you come back and it's, it's, unfortunately, it's another 75 bucks when you come back in five years. But then, hopefully in five years, I won't be around and you won't be mad at me. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, most of you know that, uh, that only the enhanced is honored in the state of Washington. So if you have a basic uh, concealed weapons permit, if they don't offer, they don't, they don't honor it in, in the state of Washington. But then you can also, if you if you uh, don't want to do that, you can go to the state of Washington and get a concealed weapons permit. And it's actually cheaper and faster, and you can go in there and get it in a day, and it's a really uh, fast process. You can go, uh, come down to the Sheriff's Office on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 11.30 for fingerprints, and then uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., and then on Saturday from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. We have those areas and those time slots set so that anybody can come down to the jail. We, and I remind you, we are open uh, 365 days and 24 hours a day, uh, so we're we're there to, to, to help and serve you. Um, as I do, is there, are there any questions so far? Can you give us the time again? Oh, you bet. And this is all on our website. Uh, if you go to bonnerso.org and you go to information, and if you click down to uh, concealed weapons permits, all of the times are on there. But it's Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. And then at Tuesdays and Thursdays at night from 7 p.m to 9 p.m. And, and then Saturday, it's from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. And you have to bring uh, $15 cash for the fingerprints. We just take cash. There's no cashiers or we can't accept a check or anything has to be. Yes, sir. I just have one question. Uh, when I took my class for the enhanced uh, the center, center, target, center target sports, they said there was 37 states. You're saying 36? Well, I looked at, I looked at uh, the website for today, and it said 30. They may have had updated information at the website, but I actually went through and counted all of them for the enhanced, and I counted 36. Uh -huh. So there may have, they may have added another state. Yeah, I, I just yeah. took the class about three weeks ago, yeah. and I just got my permit today. 
the temporary one. Sure. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, today, if you have a basic permit, that just gets you 29 states. Correct. That's the only difference between that and the enhanced. Aspect. Well, then, and also with the basic, with the basic, you cannot carry a concealed weapon on college campuses. Oh, that's the only thing. Yes. It's city limits is okay. Right. Mm -hmm. City limits. and county, okay. correct. And so you suggest that when they expire, we should continue to keep it up so that when, if we purchase another gun, we don't have to I have would. If you have a basic, I really encourage you to take the enhance because okay. one thing is the, you, you center, center Target Sports, they do a great job. They have great instructors. They talk about liabilities. They talk about, they give you scenarios, when to shoot, when not to shoot. And really, I think it, it, it's, it's a really beneficial to you as a citizen. I think and that it's really good to have as much firearms mm -hmm. training and you mm -hmm. need to practice. And one of the things I'm working on right now is a program for youth and I, I, I can't tell you what it is now, but it's gonna be, you are probably be hearing about it in the next uh, few weeks, but I really encourage uh, you to practice and practice and practice. So if you have a basic and you go take the, the test for enhanced, they don't do another whole background check and everything. Yes, do. they do. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, that's yes, that's that the takes, problem. That takes about three. Well, it it takes. Three it's, weeks, well, three we, we say it's going to take about six weeks, but our turnaround mm -hmm. is three to four weeks. It's been, it took it took them um, three weeks before I got the Right. So weeks. we're we're very quick. Yeah, they're doing it pretty quick actually. Sure, Dan. Can you bypass the basic and go straight to enhanced? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yes. It, yeah. If I, I would or a, a concealed weapon permit that, that has that reciprocal agreement, I just go straight to the enhanced because it covers everything. Um, it's, a it's still five years long, mm -hmm. and uh, you can go more places. You'll never be able to go to New York or California. California. Don't want to right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, only the bad guys have guns there. Yes. So why don't you have um, the training at the NSO? Uh, it's because of the liability. Uh, okay. Yeah, we just we just can't take that on if we have our firearms trainer and somebody has a problem. We can't testify, you know, what what training they've had and continue to have if they're involved in it. We just don't want that liability. That question: I have a lifetime permit from Indiana as a police officer, um, and then I went in got watched because they don't recognize anything from Indiana. Sure. Should I go ahead and get it? I will just keep myself square if I go to the university or something like that. Here? I would. Okay. Yes, I would. And if, if uh, and also if you're if you're a retired police officer, the way a House Bill Two B or a, um, um, HB two eighteen. Yeah, HR two eighteen. This was passed in two thousand and four. Police officers who have ten years experience or more uh, can and that they they're retired from from a police agency, they can get uh, a, a, a permit. It takes it every year, they have to qualify, but it's good in all 50 states. And that's really good. You, you can go to New York, California, Alaska, anywhere. Yes. Okay, my qualification with the weapons under a search rescue team, under the sheriff's room, does that qualify for other experiences? Well, it would, it would, no, it doesn't, no. And there is, um, there's a, you can talk to that uh, young man back there, uh, Ron, and he can fix you up and he can, he can get that done. Yeah. Thank you. Sure, man. Well, my pleasure. Yeah. What are the limitations of the parental's carry? What do you mean limitations? Uh, you can't carry concealed. Yeah, the, the limitations are uh, federal courthouses, um, schools, um, some of the, not uh, the mental, I think the mental hospitals, but there's no limitations. I, you know, that's a good question because you, you don't see the signs uh, that it says no guns allowed, like even in hospitals or stores, and it's, it's you know, it's a, a gun-free zone, come on in and kill everybody you want. I mean, it's totally, but I want to tell you, under state statute, it, there's no, that law does not prevent you from going in. What it does is if, if they know you have one, they can escort you out and trespass you, but there's, there's no city or county or state law that they can prosecute you for. Just to let you know. Yeah. Just go ahead. Yeah, we had this question before, and, and I, I think it goes on that point. Um, if if they ask you to leave, um, you just have to leave. Any yeah. anything that you put up uh, as uh, 
construction then would be acted on. Right, correct. It, it, uh, those property owners uh, running those businesses, schools, those not, that's, I'm just saying uh, private schools or, or <coughs> child care or whatever, if they have that, they ask you to leave, you've got to leave. Yeah, and, and if you don't, then they will be calling a uh, deputy or a police officer to remove you and probably arrest you for trespassing if you refuse to do so. It won't be a gun charge, it'll just be trespassing. Right. Yes. One last question. You said that um, to get, Washington would honor uh, if you had an enhanced license. That's correct. If you want a basic concealed carry for Washington, we can get that, right? There in Washington, Okay, correct. where, where what Newport, do we just or Spokane, yeah. yes. Oh, okay, and we can just take our um, permit with us? And you don't even need your permit. Oh, okay, we no. can just apply for it. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. One more question, Jerry. Um, classified gossip and rumor? Sure. You know that level? Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Um, I have been told by you know, question sources that when you get a stock, traffic stock, Obviously, it's always ID, sure. and all that kind of stuff. You happen to also include, and I, I, I haven't seen it in Idaho, but in most places, when you get stopped, you're supposed to tell <clears throat> the officer your arm. You know what? It's it's a good it's a good practice to have. But it's it's not a really good. it's not required by any law, and that was you know, that was something that uh, that the legislature the legislators are working on that that we need to get that component. Where there are some states that you're required to notify law enforcement on contact that you have a concealed weapon. I don't read that in the in the Second Amendment. So well, anyway, also, but, I but I'm going to tell you do that. what we do is every police officer is trained. And we all we already consider that everyone we contact in a vehicle or on the on the street in a pet stop that they're armed. So we take precautions. We're looking at hands. We're looking at the reactions, and we're doing that. But it's I think it's a good idea when you are stopped by a police officer that you keep your hands on the which on the driver so driving. Steering wheel. Steering wheel. Steering wheel. Steering wheel. Steering wheel. And you tell the officer, listen, I'm, I have a concealed weapon. And I tell you what, I know at least for Bonner County, they go, okay, thanks for telling me. And a lot of times they say, if you don't pull yours out, I won't pull mine out. So, <laughs> so, uh, it at least lessens that level of, of uh, because pretty much you know that that person couldn't have that and have a felony record. It could, but it's le mo less likely that that person is a crook. Well, we don't think that way. We don't think, we believe when we're stopping, I mean, we look at indicators. In our back of our mind, we always think that they shouldn't have it, but we don't act upon it. I mean, if they give us indications because of their, of their demeanor, and we may have known them from prior contacts, we know that, from, that they're a felon or have been arrested. That's one thing. But, you know, we, I can tell you, in Bonner County, at least the, the deputy sheriffs, and, I mean, they treat everybody with respect, and they, they know that you have a right to carry a weapon, you have a right to defend yourself, and we're not, we're not freaked out about people you know, carrying weapons, because, and especially after July 1st, everybody can have them, and everybody has the ability to protect themselves. And we have a, we have relatively, we have, we have a very low, um, crime rate when it talk, when we talks about assault and we have very little weapon offenses um, and violent crimes here in, in Idaho and it's normally in, in Bonner County it's normally between uh, boyfriend and girlfriend or, or spouses or something it's not just somebody walks up and you know sticks you up. Well problem if you have any knowledge of the court system when you're a jury, uh, jury member or whatever you go in they're only going to tell you about the one charge that they're going for. They were arrested under seven charges, the first one to be pleaded out, <laughs> I say. Right. Because I've seen this. The first one pleaded out is the carrying illegal, yeah. like a felon or whatever. They plead that one out as first. I know they did that in California. And the gangster comes in and you say, well, you must have been carrying. Mm -mm, they can't tell you until sentencing when you've already given your verdict. It's a little different here in Idaho. Yes, sir. After July 1st, uh, the enhanced is pretty much going to stay the same except for lowering the age. Is that correct? Correct. Now, the, but the when I say it's confusing, you can, the 18 to 20 year olds can get the enhanced, 
but it still doesn't give them ability to go on campus. Right. Yes. The permit list one, uh, is, that, is that recognized in other states? No. It, no, I don't think Only so. in Idaho. It's not pretty obvious, but yes. I have to ask Only in Idaho, no. That, and that's, yeah, that's, if you just stick with your constitutional right to carry a concealed weapon in Idaho, it just goes within the so borders of the state. To be recognized in any other state, you have to have something. Correct. Saying, you know, that's correct. Yes. I've got one other question. You said something, I, I, I don't know if I didn't quite hear you right or what, but about the uh, federal building. Now, the way that I understand it now, you're not allowed to carry it in a federal building. Correct. A federal Correct. building in, in town. Yes. And that still holds. With that still holds, and I'll tell you, there's, uh, I'll tell you that it's also, and this is really interesting, because some of the legislators brought this up. It is also illegal, if you don't have a concealed weapons permit, to have a firearm within a thousand uh, feet of a school. But there hasn't, that had that law, it's a federal offense, but our, you, our prosecutor has not filed charges or prosecuted that for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And they have said, listen, it's not something that we're going to do. And it, it's almost like um, uh, the marijuana laws. It's, it's illegal federally to, to smoke and grow marijuana but the, the, the feds have decided they're not gonna prosecute. It's the same type of thinking of uh, those now in Idaho after, after the 1st of July. I have one other question to follow up on that. Now, you said college campuses. Now that doesn't, does that allow you to? Not elementary or high school or elementary, no. Just college. Just college. College, college. What about, your, this is something I wanna clarify. What about when it's not a non-school event? Doesn't matter if it's a non-school event; it's still prohibited from carrying. Okay. Not on the on the school grounds at all. What about pepper spray and that sort of thing? That's okay. Yeah. I just thought of something. Okay. So lost in the fifties, yes. they stage at the high school. So there you are, parked in your car, waiting to do the parade, and you're on a school campus. Carrying. Well, actually, that but but actually, if you look at the code in there and I can find it for you. If you're dropping, if you're driving through the school and dropping students off, yeah, you can okay. do that. Okay. But if you're going there to go to conduct businesses, yeah. and I would say, uh, I don't know, but I would say that <laughs> if, you, if you just park there to drive out, that, to they, you probably wouldn't be prosecuted. To do the cruise. But technically, you probably would uh, be violating the okay. law. Okay. When he said school, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> yes. 